roughly about half past one. Then we have another 20 minute drive and that'll take us to Bushmills Whiskey Distillery. This is going to do a tour of the distillery as that takes roughly one hour 20 minutes for a full tour and they break them into groups of 15 every 20 minutes. So we have two coaches on today, maybe about 75 people on board in total. So to work around uh, a tour of the distillery, that's going to take probably five separate. If that's a concern for anyone for any reasons, if you've got flights, trains, buses, anything to catch, just let me know as soon as possible and I can try and come up with some sort of solution for you. So that's basically our itinerary. Now we'll expand on that as we make our way through today. And now we're going to go into all the fun stuff. Uh, it's a nice little bonus. But anyway, that's for another day. I also, on the Gold Coast, we have Jimmy Dornan. Section down, you have a little bit of limestone, and then 
in the water. You'll see that same rock north on Jump Coast Road, one of the top five coastal drives in Europe. Now, ahead of us here, we have the Black Arch. We just need to be very careful coming through here. Now, you'll see these little warning triangles, one at the bottom, 3.8 meters. That's ahead of the tunnel. Look above my head here. Maximum height, 3.7 meters. So I have 10 centimeters to play with here, so just bear with me till I get this one lined up. All these settlers from mainly Scotland and England were invited over here with the president of the coach and I said, well, just join them to go, we see dolphins down to the causeway. Oh my God, it was amazing. They were so lovely, so jumping out of water all. So they could be absolutely anywhere they are in the area, just you need to be at the right place at the right time to see them. So always keep your eyes open in the water today could be by the families that live there. Uh, but the one on the left does look a little bit like a submarine. Now as we turn here, we're approaching the area of Bally Galley. Now the big white building right in front of us there, with a grey building attached to the left, is the Bally Galley Castle Hotel. Now this is part of the Hastings Group, Northern Ireland. The Europa Hotel in Belfast, beside where we started off today, is also part of that same Hastings Group. But this hotel, the Bally Galley Castle, is regarded as one of the most haunted hotels. They were approached by a white walker, two of them were killed and one escaped. The one he escaped ran south, he was picked up by the Stark soldiers, he was taken to the warden of the north as he'd abandoned his post at the night watch. That was classed as this is the one they call the Coast Route. Just at the very back here. So the castle was built here in 1625 and we had the silly things. So there's loads of information around the hotel sort of prompting you to go up to the coast strip. I'll say go up the spiral staircase, when you go right up top, go into the ghost room. When you go into the ghost room, try on the ghost cloak. This is what loads of information from the staff in here about things that may be potentially like lights flickering, doors slamming and furniture being burst, a lot of other things. Uh, but one of the night porters I got speaking to one day uh, when I was doing a little bit of work here was a little great drama, so like I said, Downton Abbey, that sort of style of building. Not as big as Downton Abbey, but similar in style. And this is home to the current Earl of Antrim, Randall Conatry. Very, very slowly here, you'll see the boat entrance to the castle grounds with a big barbican gate here. Uh, quite a nice little photographs uh, opportunity there for you. I'll just do this nice and slow. Purpose of the quarry was to provide jobs for people in this area. Now, it was roughly about a decade before this period in Irish history, known as the potato famine, the great hunger, potato blight, whichever name you wish to give it. Maybe. Quite a traumatic time in Irish history. On the Ireland, not many jobs, that was added to the problems. Lady London Derry was aware of these issues. So she expanded the quarry to provide more jobs for people in this area so they can spend. When she came out of the water gasping for her, it was filled down here in Carnock. Now you see the little silver poles over the blue rope just behind them.
at this point and starting to make your way over there, which is a resting place of Oshi. I'll talk about that later. And then we have Glen Dunn, the Glen of the Brown River. Now, when you come back from the causeway and you may be looking for somewhere to chill out until it's time to come back to the coach, you'll have the nook to the mansion, the little pub. You'll also have the causeway hotel. Each of these you'll get like, some access to tea, coffee. And you get through that little gate, there's a little pathway that leads you up over the hills here. Just following up to the left. There's another one a little bit. He's swinging this here to the village through this other little gate right here to the left. Now to the left also you get a potentially 30, 40, 50, 60 miles depending where you lived. So that's not really going to be worth all the hassle. You want to carry 32. You then have the option to travel down this road with your horse and cart. You can carry a lot more goods, a lot more frequency. And it took away that risk factor of going to Scotland where you could camp. Irish clans are coming in the attack. Prepare for those attacks. But it was burnt to the ground in the mid 1600s by all of our Right. So, coming up to the front of the coach here, the first cave, this is Mrs. Murray's house. This is where she sold her potching. Just to, um, you go back here to the mid 1600s, where they're trying to anglicise that. Put a little cave like that and give them an education in secret. That's basically where their head school was. Now, this is the Red Arch. I'm just going to take my time coming through here in case any silly sausages come hammering around the corner. Uh, it's better to anticipate than to react. As we're continuing through the ruins of Red Bay Castle. So ahead of us is Cushion Doll, and that's where the coast road will more or less come to. To turn right, you'll see a little hill which is called Tevra. Inside, sitting there on its own, just coming into view now. That's an example of a fairy tree, F A I R Y. With the rear attached to the wheel, and doing so, Oshin lost his grip, lost his footing, slipped off the horse, hit the ground and instantly aged those 300 years, turning to dust. And this is said to be the resting place of Oshi. So the main coastal part of this finished there, just a cushion doll that we just passed through. So to continue opening up the Glen of Bantam, they carried on through, and this viaduct was installed in 1844. And that is also our closest point to Scotland. So uh, that is Cushion Dunn, the Glen, or the foot of the river done basically. You see Cush, Cush is the foot off, so the foot or high the high the water uh, high high the water level is. Now you can see obviously the different colours in the ground there. There's all the brown stains there where the that's high high the water was recently. So it has dropped down considerably. Okay, so you'll see the little river bed just slowly snaking its way around. So it goes right round the other side of that little ridge, the plug holds in there and starts to fill up and then expand over the whole area. Now on the right hand side where you have a little line of rocks Bunch, bye bye, make daddy proud, maybe see you later, fingers crossed, yeah, woo. Yeah, the tours along the coastline to get a different perspective of the coast from the sea Round there in March and April And you'll also get tours along the coastline in the summer months More so little kayak tours taking you right underneath Warning Triangle, give way so you're coming up to another sex of road, traffic on this road has priority, so wait your turn, give way. Big stone, and there's a plaque attached to this. This is to commemorate the very first radio signal sent from anywhere in the world from this very spot by a man called Giuseppe Marconi. And it was due to that initial radio signal sent, we have the majority of the technology we have today. Coming in, 
that used to take the sheep out into the island for safety to keep them free from the raiders. Nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. That's their decision at the end of the day. In a little coffee shop called the Pantry. So you'll take a left there, there's a big sign. seals, one at the top and one at the bottom. I have seen people walking back with these, just carrying them as they are. The whiskey's been rocking back and forward and set where you will be right up against your stones, but obviously that will take you a little bit longer. Now if you want to maximise your use a bus to bring you back so you get to spend a wee bit more time at the causeway. Uh, But the castle itself, built in the 1300s, uh, was also used gold. Now with this, he installed stained glass windows into the castle, tapestry. See a little, there's a little cargo around me here. Jackie Chan's fill on the medallion. Uh, at the end of the, come on in. Uh, you see a visual image of for about three seconds or so on that film, near the end of the film. Led Zeppelin's album, Houses of the Holy. On the outer sleeve of the same album, you will see the Giant's Causeway. So, I'll do a similar little drive by on the way back again. I think this is spectacular. Uh, you're here to have fun, get married. 